need to blab this to you, then type it all up. I do have intentions on creating a blog post about this and some additional little resources that you can use in an intervention setting or just a review of letters and sounds. What this video is going to talk about is the teachers that have gone through unit one of Guided Phonics and Beyond. The majority of the class is ready to move on to unit two in whole group. However, just like with guided reading, we are going to have multiple levels of students back at your small group table. That's just going to be how the classroom falls. So you're going to have students back at your table that are ready to continue in unit two work. They're going to be ready to read CBC decodables, really get on, um, get off running on that type of application. However, there are going to be students that aren't quite solid in their letters and sounds. Now, there's a few different ways that we can think about this. First of all, um, our students, we obviously want them to have a base of letters and sounds. It's not going to make sense to give them CBC decodables if they don't know S or S, A, M, whatever it might be. We need them to have those sounds. However, there's kind of a fine line between when we want them to make that jump into those books. I always have this fear, if I just keep reviewing the letter, oh, Johnny doesn't have all 26 sounds, I'm gonna go through the alphabet again, or oh, he's still missing those five, I'm gonna do it again. And before I know it, you can spend half of the school year just going through the alphabet over and over and over again. And it might be that those five sounds are just tricky for that particular student. So like I was mentioning, there's kind of a fine line, we definitely want them to have a base, but we don't want to completely oversaturate them in isolation. So sometimes a student, they don't understand what the purpose is. You know, like when we learn numbers, they immediately count, they attach it to counting. Like, oh, we learn numbers, we count with numbers, or we match a number. So I count one, two, three, four, five, I write this number that matches it. But with phonics, sometimes it doesn't always correlate to them. They understand, okay, that's my letter, that's the sound the teacher wants me to make for it, but what am I doing with that? So we kind of want them to get at the word level. Now, thankfully, if you're using my program during whole group, they are getting to the word level, they're seeing it up on the board, they're orthographic mapping, even if it's just pushing up sounds, they're still applying that. So you kind of want to get them to that level. We don't want to push them too fast, but we also don't want to go too slow. There's a little happy medium there. What I suggest for teachers to do is if you've made it through unit one, you have a group that's still not solid in their sounds, you don't feel comfortable with them moving to unit two in any capacity. What I would suggest is going through the alphabet again, but in unit two letter order. And here's why. Obviously, we know with science of reading, common sense, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, there aren't as many words that you can build at that point. So what we want to do is go through the letter order in unit two. So if they don't know their letter sounds, I'm going to go A, M, S, T, P, F, D, and I'm going to go in that order. Then naturally, this is what's happening in my students' pre-K class, without her even pushing it, they started learning A, M, S, T, and then they started building words on their own. Look, at, am, sat, pat. And kids naturally will start to pick up on those things themselves. Now, also, if you're using my program in whole group, they're going to be going in the same word building order there too. They're going to start correlating those words. And hopefully, hopefully, they'll be able to catch on and then you can get them into unit two a little bit quicker. So number one option, go through the alphabet again, but in unit two's order. And all you have to do is look at the unit two scope to see that letter order. The other option is to look at students and what sounds they do have. Now, in my classroom, and I don't mean to use the words low, medium, medium, high, high, in any type of labeling way, just kind of thinking about the class themselves, I would generally have a low group, a medium group, a medium low group. You sometimes have those kids that kind of fit in the middle. So this would be kind of like that medium low group. So not quite ready for unit two, but they do have a majority of sounds, some are lacking. Take a look at what sounds they are missing. So for example, to do unit two, lesson one, I, as their teacher, would want them to know a, m, s, o, and k. O and k are from the word like, and technically they don't have to have those because they could, it isn't a regular word to them anyway, so they could memorize that entire word, but I would like for them to have those two sounds so that they can immediately apply them in that high frequency words. Those are the sounds they need to get started on unit two, lesson one. Now, because we've already discussed these are kind of that medium low group, they might not be able to use guidephonics and beyond unit two, small group as it's designed. 
I'm telling you right now, dictation is going to be a struggle for these students. If you say, they might be able to write S. If you say sat, that might take them five minutes to get all the sounds needed. So there will be some modifications needed for these students. But again, we want them to get into unit two. We've already discussed some of them are not ready. We're going to go through the letter order, um, a unit two letter order with them. These are those medium lows. Another adjustment you can make, so adjusting in their dictation. Another adjustment you can do is what you're expecting them to do at the decodable level. We already know that the decodable level is going to be the most difficult thing for them to do. Almost all kids, probably even a three or four year old, could have three chips and push up sounds for the word sat, sat at them a little bit older they can apply a sound to each of those sounds but when i'm expecting them to decode it's going to be a much more difficult concept for them so what i would suggest is i have lots of options or you could just get on hop on microsoft word take my books type it up and put it onto like a strip format um, if you have my guided phonics to be on centers i actually already have this for you where i have each page of the book on its own little card or strip you could just take the book and just print it single-sided, hand all of the kids one page. You could chop it up the bottom. You could take the all-in-one passage and cut that into strips. There are a lot of many, many, many different things that you could choose to do. Basically, what I'm suggesting is that you give them less of a workload when it comes to the decodable level. That is going to be their most decodable level. I also had teachers last year that used Guided Phonics Beyond 2 with these students, and they just skipped the decodable level altogether until the students were more confident in their sounds. So that's something you can make a Adjustments. But knowing that there are always variables at play and you can definitely get them into the units with a few adjustments. I don't want us to think um, about these students that aren't ready for unit two as this like huge beast over here. Oh my goodness, what do I do? I need to change everything I've always done in the past. It's really just the same concept. Some of them just need more repetition. So that's really just going through the alphabet again in unit two order. Some of them just need a few modifications to get them going. And then once they get that jump start, they'll be able to catch on a little bit quicker. Now, going back a little bit, sorry, I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, for the students that you're going through unit two again with, and the, sorry, you're going unit one, approach with them um, in unit two letter order. I have a script and I've been sharing it on the in the Facebook group and I'm gonna go over it right here too with you. Again, this is a very systematic script. Having it printed out, saying it word for word, I would do this in my class too. And I would, there were some days I'm like, I don't know if I can read that script one more time, but here I am, I'm going to do it. But it's by design. The more times that you can get that sound, that letter name to them, add some kind of whole body movement to it, it's going to help them for sure. So here's what we have, we're going to say, and I'm just going to use the letter A. So every time I'm saying A, A, just know that you could put any letter in here. Today we are learning the sound A. Ah, the sound A, ah, like an apple. I'm holding up my sound icon card. The first sound we hear, an apple, is A. Ah, A, ah, A, ah, A. Ah. You make the sound A. Ah. Watch my mouth as I make the A ah sound. Now, Form your mouth to match. Let's say it. Ah, ah, ah. What is our sound? Ah. How do we form our mouth? Watch my mouth. What sound is that? Ah. What is our sound icon? Apple. Form your mouth to match the first sound in apple. Insert a sorting activity here. Is ah or not? So you can use any type of sorts. Uh, my unit one has picture sorts in it. You could have any type of sort you've done in the past. Basically, we're at the sound level here. We're not even bringing in the letter right here. We're just focusing on the sound. So it can even be just pictures. So apple, okay, not a uh, bear. Remember, you've already went through the alphabet once. So you can pretty much use any type of pictures as distractors that you would like because they should be exposed to those sounds. So is it a uh, or not? Now we're going to move to the phonics side of it, the actual letter. We spell the a uh, sound with the letter a. What is our sound? A. Ah. What is our letter? A. We spell the A ah sound with the letter A. Let's form our mouths as we make the sound and then we'll say the letter. A. Ah. A. A. Ah. A. And then I say insert a letter sound or name chant here. A lot of you already have a sound um, in letter name chant. You could um, just kind of go like A. Ah, A. Ah, A. A for A. Ah, anything that you would want to do there. What is our sound? A. Ah. What does our mouth look like for that sound? Show it. What is our letter? 
A. And then at the bottom, I say insert handwriting or path of motion work here. You could grab that straight from unit one if you want to. Um, definitely getting some kind of gross motor movement here is really good. That's why we do the sky riding. And you can either say the slams or you can even just be chanting it. A, ah, A, ah. That's really going to help there. And that's kind of what a small group lesson could look like for these students that are needing to go through the alphabet again. Now, of course, you can whip out your little decodables if you want. You can do anything extra in addition to this. This is a very systematic scope. You're going to, or script, I should say, and you're going to repeat this every single day with a new letter. And again, I'm encouraging you, once you go through the alphabet the first time, go through it the second time in the unit two order. And you can look at the scope to see that. It's A-M-S-T-P-F-D from there. And again, if you start to see like, okay, they're catching on to these letters. Every day I'm going to be reviewing just these letters. Um, start putting some little letter cards together. Look, I have a and t. What's this word? At. Okay, look, I put an S at the beginning. Now what do I have? At. And then as soon as their confidence starts to build, then you can move, um, start to move them into unit two. I babbled a little bit there. I apologize. I hope this is helpful. I'm going to include the script that I shared here. Again, just a review. This is specifically for students when you've already gone through the alphabet, you're ready to start small groups. You have this group of students, two groups. One, they're not ready at all for unit two. They need more letter time. You're going to use that script and unit two order. You have that medium low group. They are going to know a few more sounds and I think that I can get them to know a, m, s and then start to give them a modified version of unit two. Thanks so much.